Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of One Vision. Joining us today is Tim Hughes, one of the leading social selling thinkers, a follow, a fellow Kogan Page author, and a friend that I have been able to interact online, but never met in person. So I hope I will be able to do that in real life one day. Welcome to the show, Tim. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to, to talk. Thank you. So um, you've had two books out, actually, the first social selling, you have a second edition. Yeah. So, you know, I have always associated you with the book. I don't know. I remember seeing it um, the first time in the Kogan page office. I'm like, oh, wait, oh, wait, Tim. No, I know him. And I, I just, every time when I see the book, it's, it's yellow, it's catchy. And I think of you. Um, but for our audience who might not be familiar with your work, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do, the two books, and how did you make a transition from where you were before corporate life to what you're doing today? Okay, thank you. Great question. Um, so, so my background is I'm, I'm a salesperson. I've been in sales for 25 years. Uh, my background is selling um, accounting systems or ERP systems, as as we we like to call them. Um, and um, I was merrily doing that up to probably about 2014. And and at that time, I decided I probably wanted to do something else. And at that time, I kind of bumped into social media and um, quite enjoyed doing it and then realized that social media was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life was teaching people how to use social media and and mixing the two up in terms of sales. Um, And um, I just happened to all of a sudden, all of the things seemed to come together. I decided I wanted to be famous for social selling. Um, I bumped into my um, co-author for the first book, uh, Matt, and he'd already written five books so and had some contacts at Kogan Page. So we had a book deal within three months. Um, it was it was as it was as fast as that. And then really what we did with the first social selling book was put the contents of our heads down. Um and it was the first social selling book out. It was out in, we wrote it in 2015. It came out in 2016. And it's, I mean, it's, it's been a massive bestseller. I know that it's, it's surpassed the, the, uh, uh, the plans of Coke and Page many, many times. And it's been translated into, um, Chinese, um, Estonian, Arabic. Um, a number of different languages. Um, and so what happened was that they came to me and said, do I wanted to, a sec- to do a second edition? Um, because a lot of things have changed in social media since 2016. Um, so in, um, November 2021, um, my partner and I, we went to Portugal for a couple of weeks and I wrote the second edition there and it was uh, published in November 2022. I remember that was when I saw it in the Kogan Page office. Um, I was like, wow, this is cool. I had no idea. How do you write a book that fast? I always admire people who can turn out a book like this. For me, it's a it's, it's, it's long process. Um, I have these ups and downs. I My brain has blocks and it works when it feels like working and it would just shut off when it doesn't. And so I can't predict for me it's like writing is is, is really interesting it, it comes in bursts but um you also have a podcast too right tim uh yeah we have um as a company we have several podcasts so i have um as soon as i finish this i have a podcast called tim talk which is where i find interesting people um and interview them and the whole point of it is about being educational and finding people that have got something to say that will educate the audience um and so it's a 20 minute interview um and people learn stuff from it we also do a podcast on fridays which we call the digital download which actually came about from during covid i started running meetings internally where we used to get together and i said there's no agenda you just come along you can tell a joke you can tell what you're doing a customer it's up to you and of course that that would always turn to to something probably business related um, but we were having a conversation one day and someone said, why don't we just transmit this live? And and we do. We do it at 2, 2 p.m. UK time every Friday. And there can be like eight of us. Um, we get guests on. Sometimes we just find a, a, a subject matter ourselves. Again, that's 
Um, big. We're also running something called Sales TV, which is a, a sales uh, podcast in the morning UK time and in the morning US time. So it's twice a day on Tuesdays, um, which is, again, about getting guests in. But again, it's about being educational, debating things about sales and um, sales best practice, really just trying to break through some of the, the noise. So it, podcasts, as you know, are a great way of communicating with an audience. I don't know how you find time to do that. You clone yourself. I'm I'm pretty certain of that. Um, so let's go back to to your massive bestseller, Social Selling. Um, the title is Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Change Makers. Yes. So it it's interesting. You you mentioned 2014, 2015. That was right about the time when I transitioned out um, as well. And I remember being fascinated by Twitter because I couldn't be at multiple places at the same time, right? You always wanted to meet up with people. You want to see what's going on, put a tap, but you you can't be in multiple continents and time zones. And, and Twitter, <laughs> for better or worse, was a really effective community where people just get together and exchange ideas. And then, you know, different versions of social media came along. Um, but you also had a story, behind that book um, when you wrote it. I remember reading about it. Um, so curious to hear a little bit more about that. And so uh, wanted to know, what do you mean by social selling exactly? Um, I agree with you. I think that um, Twitter, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but Twitter certainly way back in then and and LinkedIn probably now is a, a way of of building relationships with people at scale in a non-spammy way. I mean, you can use those. A lot of most people seem to think that it's a platform for spamming people, but, um, you know, the best results you'll get but is by not spamming people. Um, to answer your question about what do what's our definition of social selling, um, we say it's using your presence and behavior on social media to build influence, make connections, grow relationships and trust, which lead to conversations and commercial interaction. Now, the most important thing is, is it leads to conversations because conversations create sales. Um, and of course, what happens at the moment is um, by spamming people, whether you spam people through email, whether you spam people by making cold calls, um, whatever method you, you use, generally what that happens is that that closes down the ability to have a conversation. Um, and, and so most sales processes today are, are trying to find people to then pitch or do a demo. Um, whereas what we find is that um, by actually building relationships with people and not being spammy. So so this thing, what you see on social media where people send you um, a connection request and pitching, that's not social selling, that's spam. Um, what we do is that we teach people to, uh, first of all, first and foremost, look good online. So when I mean that, I mean, you, you look like somebody that your buyer would be interested in because at the end of the day social media if you're if you're in the in the sales game is a shop window so you've got 950 million people on linkedin walking past your shop window every day and what you want people to do is go do you know that looks really interesting theo's written two books I, she looks like the solution to my problem rather than going oh my god not another salesperson is going to sell me something i don't want I'm, i can't and, and then running as fast as they can and that's the, the 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 difference, you know. We we're getting we have clients that do multi million dollar deals over social media, because they they look good. They've built a network in uh, of of uh, in um, in on social media as wide and varied as they can, can, can get it, and they're creating interesting content which people are consuming because that's why we go onto social media, um, and um, and going these people I think that can help me. There's then a conversation that takes place and the conversation is important that those conversations have been taking place since the beginning of time in terms of sales. Um, and then that turns into a commercial interaction or a sale. Um, I wouldn't like to say it's as simple as that, but um, that's that's how we see social selling. Um, and um, and and that's how we see and, and that's how we see the world. I, I love what you were saying about creating conversation. I love what you're saying about building relationships. That's the one thing people, 
I, I think tend to forget because I often get pinged by people, right? The first thing, like you say, is, you know, just message after message. Oh, bumping this on top of your inbox. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. My inbox looks exploding. If you do that, that's an automatically delete. I can't do it because I, A, I don't know you. B, please stop intruding from my space. Um, it, it doesn't work like that. Like I value relationship. I want to know people. I want to know you as a person before you start bombarding me with stuff. Um, and I, and I think that um, a lot of CEOs don't understand that what they're doing is that they're burning their future because, um, I mean, what you'll get is you'll get classic um, sales development or sales, you know, SDRs creating um, appointments. And these appointments are from their uh, from their network. And there's only so far that you can basically burn through your network before people, you just, there's no network left. Mm -hmm. And and the thing about a relationship is that a a relationship is the person may buy, they may not buy. But if they know about you, what they do is that they will refer you and say, oh, yeah, my friend's looking at social selling. You need to talk to Tim Hughes. Um, and so what you'll find is that a relationship isn't necessarily this. We have this this thing in sales. Where it's binary. You're either buying or you're not. And really, there's a there's this, you know, this third point, which is I know you. I know what you do. And I'm going to refer you because I know if I refer you in this in the world of repository, you're probably going to refer me as well. And so there's this thing where where relationships are so important. But in sales at the moment, they just seem to be. Well, uh, you know, that's it's that's for people to sing Kumbaya and stuff like that, because I want to know whether you're going to buy and you're going to buy this month. What what we're doing with sales TV is we're really de- trying to de- debate this, because what we're seeing is a a different type of person coming into the market. Millennials, Gen Z, um, who aren't interested in sitting in meetings that say and, and saying, what am I going to close this month or this quarter? And I know we we had a debate this morning about it, and there was one sales leader said, I'm not going to employ them. And we just said, then you don't have a talent pool in which to employ salespeople from. Because this generation, well, there's two generations, are just not going to do that. So you've run out of people to employ. So so the, 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 you know this this whole thing about sales and this constant, you know, sales often is about understanding and getting rejection um and a lot of people just say i don't I, i'm not I, I don't want to do that anymore i'm not interested in being rejected i'm interested in doing something to do with um sustainability or the um uh you know cha- changing the world you know you're you know i've recommended your beyond good book a number of times because i love the philosophy in there about the fact that people should be doing right by right by people and um and i think that what happens is that um you know we now have these generations that are just not going to put up with it now as i said people can disagree with me that's fine but you won't have anybody to employ yeah i i agree i I think we tend to look at things on a very surface level, like, like you said, I wrote this down, like, you know, what are you going to buy and what are you going to close? And, and it boils down to, you reminded me of, um, there seems to be a particular movement in our conference circuit where people start putting up, um, a lot of speed dating. Now there's good and bad with speed dating and network, but when the metrics boil down to, how many meetings can you get? And that's what you get measured by. Then I start questioning, well, wait a minute. It's not that. It's not transactional because you, you it, it just becomes very, is it even effective? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a good salesperson. To see, see, we, 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 don't see, we don't see it being effective. I mean, HubSpot, who make email ma- marketing systems, say that email marketing has a 98% failure rate. I believe that. Uh, and um, and so what most people think is that you just need to have more emails to pour into the top of the hopper to send more 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 emails. Now I don't know about you, but um, 
uh, it would be very rare for me to buy from someone who spammed me over email because I just don't believe that a company that's spamming over email is a company I want a long-term relationship with. Now, I happen to be one of these people that whenever you spam me, I create rules and it automatically goes into my um, waste paper basket. So you spam me once. Whenever you say I'm going to bump it up to the top, I never see that. That's, um, a, that's a good rule. I and, and, remember and, that. They just have to be diligent at basically creating the rules and and, and they don't come back. Um, now, what we've done is that we've just recently taken some cold callers um, and we put them through our social selling and train them on our social selling methodology. So all they're doing now is doing cold outbound through social selling. Um, and what they're finding is that uh, when they were doing cold calling, they would get one meeting a week. They're now getting 10. That's amazing. And 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 so what we found is that um, whenever we're doing cold outbound, um, 9% of the people will agree to a call. You just don't get that with cold calling. You, you, you know, you'd be lucky to get 1%. Again, it's for cold calling. It's, it's, you're looking at a 99, 98% failure rate. But what we're also finding is with those, whenever you make any, um, cold connection, whether it's email or, or, um, through a telephone call, what you're looking for is a next action. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for someone to say, okay, I will agree with whatever your next action is. And what we've got is, um, so we're getting a 9% acceptance rate and we're getting 33.6% people agreeing to a, a, a next action. It, it completely blows cold calling out of the water. So much so. So if you, if you've got 10 salespeople and you're selling, um, a hundred K dollars, um, uh, product, uh, you're now losing $1.2 million um, a month um, by using cold calling versus social selling. And that's a benchmark that we've published. It's on my, if anybody who's watching this, come to my LinkedIn profile. It come, the, the benchmark is at the bottom of all of my blogs, has been for the last nine months. Um, and um, you're, you're more than welcome to read it. You're more than welcome to have further conversations with us, see the data. If you don't believe us, we're more than happy to share all that. So, um, you know, and, and that's that's the thing. You know, the world has changed to digital. The modern buyer, um, the modern job hunter, the modern investor, they're all on social media. That is that is very, very true. Um, and and to that too. Social media has also changed, right? How people use it and what people use it for has changed as well. I, I've noticed that um, I myself have changed. You know, the channels that I use now is very different than the channels I used three, four years ago. Um, everything is evolving. I, yeah, I so there's, like. some, there's some data now published by Simon Kemp. Mm -hmm. if, if anybody is watching this, please follow Simon Kemp on LinkedIn. He creates this data um and uh it's free um it's there's there's no it's you don't have to give an email away or anything like that it's free and and so the the latest data that came out in july shows that there are now 60 percent of the world's population on social media active on social media um, and and people go oh yeah active means i'm posting pictures of my lunch no active is that they speak, the average person now in the world spends two hours 25 minutes a day active on social media wow the, 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 you know the, this is not social media is not a place for geeks and whatever this is the way that we run our lives you know society runs like this and it's changed the way that we to change the society you know you you switch on the news and it's so and so this, so and so's tweeted this and so and so's tweeted that um and we we spend time in social media and we're active in it and we're looking for things and now the data also shows that the people under 30 actually under 34 um will now go to social media first before they go to search and I also most read people, that people use it for news too, right? Yeah. So, so we're using it for news. Seventy-five percent of it are uh, is used for people for searching brands. So, so whatever seventy-five percent of 
the six um 60 percent of eight billion people whatever that is are using it to search for the products and services that the people that are watching have got and the only way that you're going to find those people have conversations with them and ultimately have a commercial interaction with them is to be active with on there now not in a spammy way because no one's interested in that you know Think about yourself. Why, why do we go on social media? We go on there for, we go on there for insight. Um, you know, we get one of these phones, we get LinkedIn, we'll go boring, 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 boring. Oh, that's interesting. And, and all we have to be is the, oh, that's interesting. Now I talk to lots of marketing leaders. And I know that they're putting out boring content, but they think that they're the, I'm the, they're the interesting people because the got the magic square with, with us on or the, um, the article that we've got about one of our clients. Yes. The thing is, is that you think it's really interesting because it pays your mortgage. The thing is, is that the average person isn't interested in your company or your products until we're further down the line as far as we're concerned you're just another company and just another product if you, you know my background is selling accounting systems all of the companies that sell accounting systems go to the market in exactly the same way they all say buy my product because we're great they all say that they upper quadrant in gartner magic square they all say that they can do all of the functionality that they want they all say so that the buyer just tunes out and then, then what happens is that the only differential is the person. It's that person and that personality. And he, 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 I've come to Tim Hughes's LinkedIn profile. This person looks like an expert. This person looks like they can help me. I've got this really big problem with the retainment of my people or whatever the problem is. I think this person, you know, they've written five articles about how to retain people. I'm just going to have a conversation and see what they're, what they're like. At least off the back of it, I'm going to learn something because I get writing about it. And that's all we're getting. We're getting, we're getting buyers from our clients walking across LinkedIn and talking to sellers and saying, I think you can help me. And then that's turning into, to, to, um, into business rather than this constant bang, 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 bang of spam where you're basically just playing a number and saying one in a hundred people will talk to me. Okay. I'm going to send out 200 because that means 200 people will talk to me and, and do that and do those numbers really stack up? Not if you're, you know, standing up and saying that you're going to do email marketing and cold calling now is career limiting. You can't stand up and say 98, 99% failure rates are going to, we're going to get you back on the growth path. Not to mention the block list. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, uh, you know, anybody who basically calls, calls me um, gets blocked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even pick up the phone anymore. It gets to the I point don't. where, you know, it, it, you, don't, you don't want you don't want that. I don't want to waste my time. I also don't want to waste your time. Um, yes. Right. So I wish more people would heed your advice. I really do, Tim. It, it, um, it, it almost feels like is common sense. Don't spam people because you don't want to be spammed. But yet. Yeah, that's what we keep doing. I, I often um, link how people do social media as a loudspeaker. That's all they do. They just pump stuff out and then they attack like 500 people. <laughs> and like, here you go. Listen to me. Listen to me. Without taking a step back and think, well, wait a minute. Is it even relevant? Is it useful to the people? And why are you doing what you're doing? Because like, I look at my list of notifications and and I'm exhausted. I, I get to the point where I rarely read them anymore because there's just too many. And a lot of them are not relevant to me. Um, but I want to get back to to how we're using social media because I, I think one of the things that I've gotten the question on, and I, I don't quite have an answer to it. People keep asking me, what are we supposed to do now? Because there's so many changes, so many different ways people are using us, so many different channels, if you will. People call it, you know, Twitter copycat and, and what have you. I have my reservation on, do we actually want an exact replica of Twitter? But that's, besides, that's a different, whole different conversation. Um, for brands, right, who are looking 
to use social media for for companies that are looking to to start on social selling what are they supposed to do right now because it seems like every week there's a new flavor of the day a new way of doing things or oh wait this is the old way we don't want to do that anymore i think it's because it's constantly changing you have to keep up to date um but i mean in the b2b world i would only ever recommend LinkedIn to clients, probably Twitter, um, because of still the um, most of the tools that do the social media listening are focused on Twitter and maybe Instagram. You know, if you're if you're B two C and you have the, the particular demographic, you probably need to be on TikTok. But that's kind of a, a very it's a very different social platform because it's not built on relationships, mm-hmm. as in I follow you. It's based on the algorithm brings up um, videos of like other videos that you've seen. You know, if you if you watch a lot of dash cam videos on TikTok, TikTok, all it will do is show you dash cam videos. Um, so it's quite different in the way it works. Uh, but um, from a B two B perspective, I think that there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of people left Twitter and they're all starting up Twitter um, lookalike. Um, and I think at the moment, until one of those breaks breaks the barrier and actually becomes something um the best probably ignored i mean if we look at threads um and threads grew very very quickly but we all went on it because we had an instagram account and we were able to create a threads account we went on it and then we didn't go back to it well yeah it's quite that, that's quiet. what the, the figures show so really i would keep that down to, to to LinkedIn, Twitter, and really the essence is about providing insight and understanding that n- nobody's interested in your product. N- n- what people are looking for is insight. So quite often, you know, from a tech perspective, that's about um, finding the people in your organisation that have the knowledge and sharing that. Sharing is caring, and sharing is caring. You know what pe- people are, what people are looking for is they're looking for insight. And, and the more insight that you put out, the better, you know, and that's, and, and some people will read written, um, uh, po- um, blogs. Some people won't. Therefore, you know, you need to have, um, you need to have written, you need to have video. Um, you know, it's very easy to spin up a podcast nowadays. Um, and so, and, and not a podcast where you read from a script, you educate people. That's that, that again. People are looking to be educated. They're looking for that. I'm, I've said inside. I don't know how many times. That's what they're looking for. We all do it. You, you know, even if we say I'm going to go to Iceland for a weekend, what do we do? Well, we go and find an article about what we can do in Iceland. That's what I'm. You know, so think about the business issue that that you're solving, and think about putting out content that solves that problem. It's a subtle difference than rather than saying here's our product and we've got twelve features. People won't read it. to laugh that was actually by the way one of the first lessons i learned when i oh back in time 1997 i think it was my second job and um i was putting up a presentation about a product and the sales manager came to me and said no 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 don't talk about your features let's think about why do people want to listen to you What problems do they have? And let's go from there. So I still remember that. Um, So before I let you go, I do want to ask you. So you had social selling, you had uh, two editions of that. And then you had your um, other book. So two books, three, I'll count it as three. Yeah, I I tell people it's three, but but yes, I have a... um, Three. uh, My second book is a book called... Smart Cutting, yes. How to Achieve Competitive Analysis Through Blended Sales and Marketing. So... When is the fourth book coming out? <laughs> uh, I'm 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 currently putting a plan together. <gasps> oh, yay. All right. So I cannot wait for that. Um, but if you can write about anything in the world, let's just say, you know, you can write about travel, you can write about, you know, how to be smarter, how to be a better human, how to reach people. I don't know. What what would that anything be if you can just write anything? Um or stick to what you're doing. 
Well, well, it, it's interesting you say that. My, I have a, a one of my passions. I have two big passions in life. One is travel, and one is music. And and um, I would love to be able to write about and and travel, and I would love to be able to do more stuff around music. I, I'm not a musician. More about I collect vinyl records. Um, um, if for those, if, if you, I know that you just put this out on sound, but behind me on my video is my great grandfather's seventy eight record player. I was going to ask you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and also behind me is one of my father's real, reel-to-reel tape recorders. He was a sound engineer at the BBC. Um, and uh, this this uh, record cabinet, which I'm touching behind me, this wooden one, was made by my grandfather. And that has 700 of my great-grandfather's 78s in it. So what I would love to do is kind of do something that was to do with my passion, which is music, or travel. Wow. I would read that. I would read that as well, in addition to what you always write. Can we put a chapter in for food? I love food. <laughs> uh, f- food is it, food is great as well, yes. Yeah, that is, that's good, why good, I travel. Good food. food. Exactly. Good food. Different food in different places. You always find something yes. different. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for your time today, Tim. Before I let you go, how do people find... Uh, about your channels, uh, the podcasts that you have, the conversations, and also your books. Um, so thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the books are all on Amazon.com, um, and they should find me them. I'm Tim Hughes or Timothy Hughes. Um, I'm Timothy Hughes or Tim Hughes on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. You can find me there. Our website is dlaignight.com, um, and uh, they're, they're, they're the best places to find me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And for the rest of our listeners, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of One Vision. We will talk to you all next week.